my journey with technology starts with like robotics. Throughout high school, I did a whole lot of robotics, and it was uh, just an incredible way to learn about science and technology. So that was uh, where everything started for me. And then I took a lot to like I I was a lot more interested in the programming side of robotics and just CS in general, even even math to an extent, like uh, problem solving things like that interested me a lot more. So I uh, like towards the last. year of high school i expanded my horizons learned a bit about like machine learning and natural language processing and the new technologies uh, that are coming up around uh, surrounding these topics uh, just data data based sciences like data science um, and then and now uh, i am uh, going to university at caltech like you said and i w- i'm pursuing computer science here started robotics in 7th grade i think maybe 6th grade and i used to go to competitions the kind of numbers i used to see was like 1 is to 50 which is like one girl to every 50 guys which i remember even counting and checking uh, why are there such little girls you know um but that's it it is true so um it gets intimidating when you're surrounded by people that in any context that don't look like you that aren't like don't have the same experience as you and that tends to happen at robotics competitions but one thing i used to always tell myself is that what i'm interested in and what i want to do is my responsibility and just because the opportunities aren't right that doesn't mean i give up on uh, my own ideals and my own goals when i have an idea in my mind like most makers will say just go for it right like just build it for me i i mull over the idea for really long and i i try to see if the time commitment i'm making to this idea is worth it and the reason i do that is because again the more you think about what you're going to do the better you can improve the end product we had a tech competition hosted at our school and we usually do installations for uh, the tech competition right so my friend and i we were thinking of ways that we could make this installation interactive and exciting and i'm i'm also a musician so i thought i'd sort of bring that in into the installation so uh, we end up ended up building a stair piano it was it was a very simple process to build uh, because we basically use ultrasonic distance sensors and we put them on the stair is one by one but then uh programming the sounds to coordinate and making sure that the sensors don't inter- interact with each other uh and interfere with each other all of that was like very uh, exciting and obviously the end product was uh, really fun not only the students even the teachers are having a good time just going up and down the stairs so that was one really fun project that i worked on with my friends because i got to see people interact with my work i think that's what made it so exciting and then the second project was uh, more of a technical a uh, technically challenged project a challenging project for me so i i said it was very important to me and that was because a lot of my learning has been on youtube right because like you said in schools these days uh, resources for learning are either limited by the syllabus or just unavailable right so a lot of my learning has been on youtube and from that i sort of thought about learning retention and i wrote this nlp based chrome extension that basically looks at the youtube video and creates questions for you and so a little a little after you watch the video it'll show you a questionnaire about what you watched and you can sort of revise what you learned through the questionnaire so uh, that was one of the more um, challenging projects i did Yes, that's me here. Me here and I uh started robotics with Tarun so almost at the same time and me here was always really into building things and he still is he's he's incredible the kind of work he's doing and I was always into like writing code and working with the software. So we always complemented each other and but we were like really good friends as well. So we would always communicate like about each other's like technical problems and then we could collaborate to uh make it easy 
empathy for each other to work. I feel like working with Mihir was a very close to a real life experience working because I didn't always work too much with the hardware, but and he didn't always work too much with the software. But we could learn from each other and set up like a good work environment. So uh, Mihir was definitely one of my uh, very good friends working. always impressed by computer scientists and just scientists I guess in general uh, so as a, as a child I would study a lot like I was a very like introverted person but I worked a lot like all all the time and that usually meant my grades were good as a, as a child and I did well in most subjects but my interest was always in STEM like I don't think I've ever been a non-STEM person and I guess the reason for that is I don't find the kind of satisfaction I find in problem solving solving in any other field at least so far but like I said I'm, I'm a musician and I, I really enjoy literature so both of those are also parts of me but I know that like my uh, first and foremost priority is STEM because I feel like I can have the most impact in STEM. My mom, like I said, was always in technology and she continues to work as like a technology head at RBS. So the role she's played is basically, she's the kind of mother that, you know, is always at work but has time for you somehow anyway, you know, like it, she she's just incredible at balancing life and that's always really inspired me and she used to sort of like always answer my weird questions as a child like I, I don't have a better way to put it like I would have many many quest mathematical questions and she would always you know sit down with me and actually address them rather than what most teachers would do which is just it's okay like figure it out <laughs> but so so that's really an irreplaceable role and I and I hope everyone has like I, I wish everyone would have uh, such a mentor and such a teacher that would always not underestimate you you, but rather answer your uh, curiosities so yes that's the role that my mother played <laughs> I'm really excited about the potential of technology in personalized tutoring systems. So the, the term I used to refer to it is called Digital Aristotle. Like I, it's just a term I read online, which I found interesting. So I guess to summarize, I believe that like every student has their own unique way of learning. Uh, some learn by reading, watching, uh, like through activities, through experiences. And all students learn at different paces. They learn with different learning curves. And I feel like we just put all of that in a box and tape, send them all to school. But I feel like with the rise of just personalization techniques and machine learning, things like recommender systems that work so well on Netflix and YouTube, you know, like you get recommendations so well. I feel like similar technology should be used to harness all the information that's available online, all the knowledge that's available online. And I guess what I mean is like that gap needs to be bridged between the personalization power of machine learning and the sure magnitude of the different kinds of content available online. And I feel like that's one application of these technological techniques that's just waiting to happen. And I, I can't even imagine the impact it could have like across a country like India where uh, people like us are blessed with teachers the way that we are, but so many people don't even have access to education that can help them grow. So definitely a digital Aristotle is my dream project and I'm working slowly towards it. So everyone is born with a creative spirit. I just like to say that you should like explore your own creative spirit completely unapologetically. Like go out and do the things that excite you. Reach out to people that you want to be like and that means you can reach out to me <laughs> if you want to be like me. Keep an open mind, look for enriching experiences. And one thing I wish that someone had told me when I was a young creator was to try crazy things. Like even, even now I'm a bit reserved for just like going for this project. 
that, right? Like I think a lot before I work, but I think that there's value in just going for it and doing crazy things. Nothing is too complicated or too difficult for you to try, you know, like it doesn't take a lot to try and ask for help, but don't back down. I guess only when you explore your creativity, do you learn and really grow. Thank you.